Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Jay Shankar defends India's purchase of Russian oil after EU calls for action. Pakistan to try Imran Khan's violent supporters under army laws. And Nepali Sherpa sets Everest record with 27th ascent. And now for all the details. Responding to remarks by European Union Foreign Policy Chief Josep Borrell of calling for action against Indian refined products from Russian crude, Indian Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar advised him to look at EU Council regulation. Ahead of his meeting with Jay Shankar, Borrell in an interview to the Financial Times had suggested the EU could target buyers of Indian refined fuels they believe are derived from Russian crude. In a query by media regarding Borrell's statement, Jay Shankar said as per the council regulations, if Russian crude is transformed in a third country, it cannot be treated as a Russian product. Earlier too, Jay Shankar had defended India's imports from Russia while indirectly criticizing the West for pressuring them to minimize trade with Russia in view of its military actions on Ukraine. I, I really don't uh, see the basis for your question uh, because my understanding of uh, the council regulations is that uh, if Russian crude is substantially transformed in a third country, then it's not treated as Russian anymore. I would urge you to look at council regulation 833-2014. India's foreign ministry has rejected the U.S. State Department report on religious freedom in India, calling it based on misinformation and flawed understanding. The State Department in its annual report to the Congress on International Religious Freedom has accused Indian authorities of violence against members of religious minorities in multiple states. India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson has called the report motivated and a biased commentary by some U.S. officials. It comes just a month before U.S. President Joe Biden will host Prime Minister Narendra Modi for a rare state visit in Washington on June 22. Pakistan civilian and military leaders have decided that rioters and their backers who attacked state assets and military installations to protest ex-PM Imran Khan's arrest will be tried under the army laws. PM Shehbaz Sharif condemned the violence, adding it comes under the category of terrorism. The army had previously said that the May 9 attacks against the military were pre-planned and ordered by the leaders of Khan's party. Khan has denied the allegation and demanded an investigation. The Human Rights Commission of Pakistan said it strongly opposes the move as military courts often conduct summary trials, hearing only abridged evidence. Meanwhile, in the latest, the Islamabad High Court on Wednesday extended its orders against Imran Khan's arrest in further cases till May 31. Locals across Pakistan-occupied Kashmir are fed up of battling back-breaking inflation and food crisis. Every day, hundreds of people queue up outside government shops only to return to their homes empty-handed. A report. People across Pakistan-occupied Kashmir have complained due to incompetent policies of Islamabad. They are battling back-breaking inflation and food crisis without any support from the custodians of power. Locals say they are frustrated as the administration, millers and the big dealers have forged a nexus to sell subsidized wheat flour in the black market to earn huge profits. Every day, hundreds of people queue up outside government shops only to return to their homes empty-handed. <laughs>
Pakistan has been grappling with record inflation and anemic growth. Locals in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir say their region, which is already marginalized, has borne the major brunt of unfair taxes being imposed, while there is no development in sight. The Human Rights Watch has stated that Afghanistan remains one of the world's worst humanitarian disasters. In a statement, the Rights Watch talk said that two-thirds of Afghanistan's population is food insecure, including 8,75,000 children like facing acute malnutrition, on, uh, uh, and also women and girls remain at most risk. The statement added that the United Nations is fighting at two fronts, keeping aid flowing to those most in need, while also keeping pressure on the Taliban to end its appalling human rights violation. Since the Taliban seized control in 2021, the amount of international aid has abruptly lost on one side and the introduction of repressive policies, including the ban on female aid workers, has worsened the situation. Kami Rita Sherpa, a record-holding Nepali Sherpa guide, has ascended the world's highest peak, the Mount Everest, for the record 27th time, beating his own record. 53-year-old Sherpa scaled the 8,849-meter mountain early on Wednesday along the traditional Southeast Ridge route while guiding a foreign climber. The seven summit treks for which Kami Rita works announced the record on Twitter and mentioned that the Sherpa had dedicated his life to mountaineering and has become synonymous with the Everest. Kami Rita scaled Everest for the first time in 1994 and has climbed it almost every year since then, except when climbing was halted for different reasons. Everest has been climbed more than 11,000 times since it was first scaled in 1953, with many people going up multiple times. More than 320 people have also reportedly died on the mountain in all these years. The picturesque region of Jammu and Kashmir is gearing up to host the prestigious G20 meeting for the first time in the history. The event is expected to have a positive impact on the trade and tourism sectors of the region. Take a look. The Jammu and Kashmir Academy of Art, Culture and Languages is all geared up with activities ahead of the Tourism Working Group meeting of G20 members from May 22nd to 24th in Kashmir Valley, part of a series of meetings ahead of the G20 summit in New Delhi in September. The event is expected to have a positive impact on the tourism and trade sectors. Various cultural and traditional programs will be presented by artists from across the valley to greet and amuse the participants. We want to make sure that the culture, the rich cultural diversity of Jammu and Kashmir is reflected in its true perspective. And a platform is provided to all the youngsters, all the artists who are from Jammu and Kashmir and who have a great abundant talent uh, to give them a platform and to ensure that we portray our culture in the right perspective. We are going to hold events in these next 15 days. As uh... The G20 meeting is expected to promote Kashmir internationally and give a new dimension to the tourism sector. Tourism is the backbone of the economy of Jammu and Kashmir and a record number of tourists are expected to visit Kashmir this year also. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.